Welcome to this Bite Size PD where the topic is Canva Docs. This is a feature within the Canva program that all Canyon School District teachers and students have access to. Remember, you log in with your CSD Docs account. But this is a feature in Canva that I don't think gets enough attention until now. So the learning intention and success criteria for this Bite Size PD is you're going to learn about Canva Docs and the features available so that you can create and share engaging, interactive, and collaborative documents. And then you'll know you're successful when you can create and share a document using one, two, or even more of these features that are shared within this presentation. So as you're going through this Bite Size PD, a task I'm going to ask you to complete is I want you to think about the possibilities of using Canva Docs in your teaching practice, whether it's you as the educator creating, whether it's documents, lesson plans, uh, newsletters for students and families, or how could you utilize Canva Docs with your students. And as I go through this presentation, you're going to notice that I'm going to go in and out of this presentation because I want to get into Canva Docs and I want to show you, not just talk about what you can do, but I actually want to show you how to do the features or access the features that you're going to be learning about today. So what is Canva Docs? It's an online document creation tool. It combines the functionality of a traditional, traditional document editor. So think about like creating a, a Google Doc or a Word, a Word document, but you have the design capabilities of Canva, um, which offers an, an intuitive interface. It allows you to create visually appealing documents. So it's not just text and a picture. You can actually embed videos. You can embed other Canva uh, presentations or videos that you've created. Uh, it's a way to really create a dynamic collaborative document. Um, and with the features you're going to learn about today, I'm going to, I think, I'm hoping you're going to see one, the possibilities and one, why this is such an overlooked uh, feature within Canva or tool within Canva, because it's just a great, it's a really fun and exciting tool the more you learn about it. So I'm not going to read through these one by one because you're actually going to learn about them throughout the course of this Bite Size PD, but these are the top 10 features to know about and try out regarding Canva Docs. There are a few that I'm going to point out to you that are only going to be available to teachers. Um, so unless I tell you this is only available to teachers, know that these features are also available to the students if, and you can have them create docs and access these and use these features as well. So the first feature I want to talk to you about is when you're using a Canva doc or creating a Canva doc, you can always create from a blank document or you can always create from a customizable template. And Canva, if you've used Canva before for any other type of product, like a video or a presentation, you know there's tons of uh, templates for you to choose from. And any template you choose from, when you bring it into your editing, your editor space, you can always edit, delete, tailor that um, template to what you actually want it to be. I mean, the, the basis of using templates is you're not starting from scratch. And sometimes it's nice to see how someone else may have laid out um, like a worksheet, a lesson plan, a project proposal, a newsletter, so that you can, once again, you're not starting from scratch, but you're starting with um, some content, content that you can then change and tailor to what you want. Um, when I jump over to Canva, I'm just gonna start from a, a blank document. But just know as you're exploring, maybe you do want to start with a template if that fits your um, learning style. Uh, the second feature that's worth noting or knowing about with Canva Docs is the quick actions. And you can use the quick actions for engaging document design. So I'm going to show you this. It's a way that you can just quickly add, whether it's heading, a, a table, it's um, a highlight block, a quote, if you want to bring in an a, a chart or a pie graph and these charts and pie graphs can definitely be tailored to the data that you want to share so it allows you to edit the text the numbers so that your bar graphs or your pie graph is actually representing the data that you want to show so i'm going to jump over to canva for a hot second and i'm going to show you these first two features so when i'm creating a new canva doc i'm just going to click doc and once again you can start from a template you can create a, a blank doc i'm just going to start with a blank doc so those quick actions, so you'll see when I get into a doc, I can start typing. So I can say states of matter. This isn't a quick action, but this is just me adding text. The quick action, when I click on this document, and I should, where is it? Oh, there we go. 
When I click on this document, notice this little plus sign appears. This plus sign lets me know that this is the quick actions. And it's just a quick way, and I'll talk about Magic Write. That's one of the features we're gonna talk about in a moment. But it's a quick way for me to, um, the design will actually open a Canva editor. So if you wanted to create a uh, banner to go across the top, and I'll do that for States of Matter. Um, I can say States of Matter. I can change the background, I can add more images. So once again, remember you have the full features or the um, design elements of Canva. I can click save. Maybe I wanna get rid of this now. Oops. So then I click on cl uh, quick actions again. I can do a subheading, like definition of states of matter. And if you notice, it has a little bit of a blog, um, feel because it just puts everything new underneath what's previously there. I'll say here is my definition. And then I'm just gonna do a couple more just so you can see, but I think you're getting the gist of, it's just a way for me to add different design elements to my, um, my doc. So here is my awesome quote. And the last one I'll show you, but I'm not going to actually edit the data because of time. But if you did want to do like a, a bar chart, notice how it comes in and off to the left hand side is where I can actually adjust the labels. I can adjust, um, what I call this label one, maybe this is 10. Notice how when I'm manipulating the data, it's adjusting over here. So that's the quick, that's, I showed you how to create, you can use a template if you want. This is the quick actions. So going back to the presentation, the next feature that's worth noting is the magic right for content generation. So this is a feature that right now is only available for teachers, not for students. Um, but what this is, it's an AI powered writing assistant to help generate ideas, outlines, or even draft content. So this gives you an example of when the quick write, when I click on it, I have these options to choose from. So let me jump back over to my states of matter. So right here I said, here's my definition, but let's say I wanted to use magic write, and I'm gonna say write a definition for states of matter. And when it'll generate, it doesn't automatically put this into my document yet, because I can definitely read it first to make sure it feels good. And I can say more, more like this, this, but, so I can help tailor. This is that prompt, um, engineering where you want to adjust what you're telling the AI to do to get the, the output you're looking for. But let's say I like it, I can actually add it. I can then delete maybe something that, because I added two different, um, actually it created its own title for me. I could have deleted it, I kept it. Um, I can go in here and I can even edit any of this, this content if I want to. Um, so another example, I'll do one more with magic, right? I can say, and you can see where I can choose one of these to start from. Um, if I'm even looking for some questions, but I'm going to say, um, provide four examples of a solid. Click generate. And I'm going to insert and notice how it gave me, and I can go back and I can edit this if I want. And then I can even use the quick action if I wanted to add more content to it. So that is the magic right. Once again, available for teachers, not for students at this time. Uh, feature number four, there's seamless multimedia integration. Bottom line, as I mentioned, I think briefly at the beginning, it's a way for you to utilize and access the images, videos, GIFs, a lot of the design elements that are, that are built within Canva. So with the document that I've already started, let's say I have some examples of solids, but I wanna actually include an image as well. So this is where I can do the, I'm not gonna do quick action. I can go over to elements and I can type in ice, find the picture I want, I can bring it over. So notice again, it's very like linear. So it's putting it right underneath um, what I have above it. And so when I adjust this image, um, I, the alignment, I have a few options. I have, you know, center, just, you know, left, right. Um, so if I wanted to add another image, 
if I want images and I've, as I'm still exploring this, I've learned that if I want to have more than one image side by side, it's easier to do a table and then I could say, oh, do three. And then I could actually click and drag this image here because maybe I want three different examples of what ice could look like. Um, if I wanted to bring in video, let's see if I have granite. Actually, I'll just bring this in. Oops. And then we'll see if we can find a good video for wood. I can bring that in. So you can see where images, I can actually bring in video as well. So it's not just um, text and pictures. I can actually bring in that image, the um, video as well. So that is that seamless multimedia integration. And I hope you're noticing like a lot of it's clicking and dragging. It's that combination of using the quick edits. It's um, looking for the photos, the, the, if I want to add in a table this way, I don't always have to go through quick edits. Um, I can definitely use the design elements that are built right within Canva. Uh, the next feature is the collaboration tools and version history. So what I love about Canva, and if, if you haven't tried this with other product products that you can or things that you can create in Canva, the collaboration is there as well. But it's where you can have real time collaboration, whether it's teachers working together on one document or you could have students working together on one document. And when their mouse is moving around on the document, you can actually see who is who. But um, this picture is just a way for you to see where anytime you see a little um, circle with the pencil, there's a comment that's been made. Um, you can actually assign comments to individuals who are added to the document. There's a way for you to provide emojis or stickers to allow um, maybe some real time feedback. So when you're in your document, when you wanna add people to your document, um, notice in the upper right hand corner, there's a picture of me because I'm in the document. If I click the plus sign next to that, I can actually add names and add, um, so the CSD docs emails is what you'd wanna use to add people to this document. And when I add them, they will become editors. You can also do share and say people with access can edit. And then as I'm going through this, if I wanted to notice how when I click on the granite picture, this little speech bubble is how I can leave a comment. Um, I could actually maybe highlight this, um, leave a comment, and maybe this is where I wanted to leave an emoji. Um, so just a great way for you to one, have a document where students can all be working together versus one person's doing all the typing and the creating they can all be creating together and even like providing feedback, real-time feedback to each other. Um, in regards to version history, if you go to file, there is an option that says version history. And this will let you know um, over the course of the time who like the current version. And because I just started this, we're just seeing um, the current edits, but there would be a version history that you could access to see. I don't know if you can, oh, yep, you actually can. You can restore this version. If for some reason you realize, ooh, the version we had at, you know, an hour ago was better, let's restore it. So collaboration and the version history, it's definitely features worth um, using. Um, so whether for you as the teacher or with your students. Uh, feature number six, and I love this, is how you can integrate with other Canva designs that you've created. So the picture you're seeing of, in front of you is this liquid, which is a, a document or actually a, an image I created in Canva, and I could actually bring it into my project. So going to my document, um, and I'm just going to go down. Um, on the left hand side, there's a folder that says projects. And so this actually pulls any of the documents, presentations um, that I've created within Canva. And so looking for, I'm going to see all my designs. Um, I did have that liquid. So let's say this is what I wanted to bring in. I can just bring it into my presentation. Um, notice how this is a present. So this was a, um, like an infographic that I made. Uh, maybe I wanted an actual presentation. I can bring that over. And so it's a presentation within a doc. And so when you're looking at it or someone's accessing this, they can actually scroll through the presentation right within my document. 
So great option to integrate other Canva designs if that fits with whatever you're creating. Um, feature number seven, the accessibility features. Uh, this is something I love to share because I think it's always important if you're creating something for students and families to access, whether they're reading it online, you always want to be aware of anyone who might be using a screen reader or what can you do to ensure that what you are creating is accessible to all learners. So when you're creating, um, Docs itself supports accessibility by offering clear layout options, font adjustments, ensuring that materials are readable and engaging for all students. And then it does provide a, a way for you to check for accessibility, and it'll even let you know what issues it's um, finding and gives you some prompts on what to fix. So when it comes to creating, and I've always been guilty when I was creating like either a Canvas page or a document in Google, when I wanted like the heading to be bigger, rather than using like heading or subheading, I would like just write my text and then bold it and make it a bigger size. The problem with doing that is if someone is using a screen reader, the screen reader can't distinguish that that's like a heading for a new section. And so by utilizing the heading subheading body, um, that allows, it really supports accessibility. And so once again, this is this whole program is built to help with the clean layout and help you make sure whatever you're creating can be accessible. But then also under file, there is this accessibility and you can say check design accessibility. And this can let me know. So right now my like the, the sizing of my text is okay. My color contrast is okay, but it's finding nine issues for alternative text and chances are this is because of the images and possibly the video that I've added. So anyone using a screen reader because I've added images, they the screen reader is either not going to read that or it may read what the image file is called, which can be confusing. So if I click on this, you'll see where I can actually click and it's like no alternative. So I can even say it's marked as decorative. So if the image you have on your document truly is just for a decorative um, element. It doesn't, doesn't provide um, context that was helpful to the, the person accessing your document. That's when you can easily say mark as decorative. But my examples of the solids, um, I'd wanna say a pile of ice cubes. So this lets the person know this picture is a pile of ice cubes. And you can be as descriptive as you want for the sake of this, I'm just gonna do that. But anyway, so you can go through and actually add the alt text or mark as a decorative image. Um, just one way to help ensure that what you are creating is accessible. Uh, the next feature, uh, shareable and printable formats. And so with anything you create in Canva, they make it so you can easily share with uh, whoever you wanna share with. So that's just by clicking on the share in the upper right hand corner, you'll see where you can download. So when you are creating these documents, you can definitely download and actually have a paper copy. Um, the public view link is a great one to use if you just want anyone to have access and any updates you make automatically update and you don't have to adjust this, um, this link. And when you click on see all, you can see what other options you have specifically with docs. Um, so chances are what you're probably going to use is the public view. Um, you also can, this collaboration li link, you could say anyone with the link can view or can edit. Um, so you can definitely provide this link as well when you're trying to share. I, I like utilizing the public view link if I'm sharing it with students and families. I like to use the collaboration link when I'm working with someone who is either giving me feedback or actually editing the document, but you can definitely choose what um, works best for you. Uh, the last two are Magic Switch. Um, I wanted to separate them because with Magic Switch, there's three options and there's only two for students. So um, the first one is the Magic Switch. You can translate your document and you can also transform your design. Um, the transform is not available for students. It is available for teachers though, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But the translate's awesome because it can actually help you translate your document to a different language. And when you do that, one, you choose the language, but then optional is you can adjust the tone of voice. And so you can choose one of these and then click translate. I still recommend that if you ever translate any document, you have someone 
read it for you just to make sure it did translate um, accurately or as close as possible. You want to be aware of any issues that may have happened when it translated. Um, but let me go into the doc and show you. So let's see if I go to magic switch. I have translate and I can say translate to, we'll do Spanish. I'll just say um, original and click translate. It'll take a moment. And what it's doing is keeping my original copy and it's gonna open a new version that's Spanish. So now I now have my English version and I have a Spanish version. So you wanna be aware that if I make any ed edits here, it doesn't automatically make the edits here. So you wanna be aware of that. Um, the transform, this is where for the teacher, you can transform it into a summary, a blog post, an outline, um, a presentation outline. So you have some options. So if I did like an executive summary, and transform into doc. Um, let's see what this looks like. So it keeps my original and then it makes it into a overview. So just a, a neat feature to know about this um, and you can definitely explore if it fits with what you're trying to do. Um, the last feature, and this is actually by far my favorite, and it's a big reason why I was like, why are we not telling teachers and students about the magic switch where you can actually take your document and and convert it to a presentation? So, because when I think about working with students, I've always wanted students to maybe plan out their presentation first. Like, what are you going to put into your presentation? and then work on the presentation after. But sometimes they get so hung up on putting things in the presentation, um, they don't focus as much as I would want them to on the content. I wonder if, I hope that makes sense. So with my presentation here, and I'm actually gonna go to a student view. So I actually had, let's say this is a student working on states of matter. They actually have a quote, a definition, some examples, pictures, they even brought in a video. Um, so with the magic switch, once again, it just translates there, transform is not, but the convert to a presentation is available. They click on convert to presentation, um, get started. They can choose a template. I'm gonna go back, I'm just gonna pick one. Create my presentation. This will now take all the content I had on my doc, put it into a presentation, and you'll see maybe when it gets in here, I'm still not liking the way the presentation got uh, tr um, converted, but it at least starts the presentation and I can go, because um, maybe I want these pictures to all be together in one slide versus um, three different ones, you know, so I could do this. So just a great way to have students, one, work on the assignment, whether it's a research project, um, like I just states of matter, and then turn it into a presentation that they can then do more of the editing and then create a presentation to either share with the class or submit to the teacher. So, and that magic switch docs to decks, which once again is my favorite one because I love the idea of being able to have all of my content on the doc. And then when I'm ready for the presentation, I can then put my focus into editing and updating that presentation. So I wanna go back to that learning intention success criteria. Um, it was to learn about the different features available in Canva. And I gave you a really, this is a quick Cliff Notes version. So I encourage you to go in and actually try some more things out, like bringing in some video, um, bringing in other Canva projects that maybe you have, trying out the magic right. Um, and then I hope you've been thinking about possibilities of what you could use this for versus what you could have your students do. And then just to give you some ideas for classroom use, like for a teacher, you can create interactive lesson plans, um, student portfolios. You could have students document their projects, reflections, and achievements throughout the year. Um, it could be a collaborative brainstorming assignment where whether it's you as educators working together um, for brainstorming, brainstorming sessions or mapping, mind mapping activities, or you have students do that. Um, you can use this to create classroom newsletters, research reports, goal setting and reflection journals. Um, maybe this is how you create your classroom rules and procedures, um, study guides, and then even some historical timelines. Those are just a few ideas. I know you being in the classroom, uh, some may already, you may, may already have some ideas of your own, but definitely some ideas to think of, of how you could use Canva Docs, either for you as the teacher or with your students. So, 
Thanks for watching this Bite Size PD. As a reminder, if you want relicense your credit, uh, please complete this form that's linked here. And with Canva, if you need support or would love to ask more questions, I am more than happy to support you any way I can. Um, my name is Camille Cole and my email is camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org.